Up until now, we've only been working with one Docker container, and that is our node container, which houses our Express application. However, what I want to do is I want to add a second container because this course is ultimately a Docker course. And I want to make sure that you guys are comfortable with adding in more than one container into your application. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a Mongo database to our application. This is going to make our app a little bit more of a real world type application because we'll finally be able to persist some data. So let's head on over to Docker Hub. And so here I already searched for MongoDB, um, but if I just search for again, you'll see that the official image is going to be the first result. So select that. And this is going to have all of the instructions for working with the MongoDB image. And if we head on over to Docker run example right here, we can see that uh, the name of the image is just Mongo. So we can do Mongo and then the specific tag or version that we're looking for. So let's go to our Docker compose file and let's add in this new Mongo database. And so first of all, we have to figure out where we need to add it inside this Docker compose file. And so if you already forgot, uh, under services, this is where we actually define all of our containers. So each container is a different service. So we have one service called node app, which is our node container. So logically, if you want to add a MongoDB container, we're just going to create a new service. So let's go here. I'm going to do, uh, make sure it's just one tab from the base. Oh, not one. There you go. So it's lined up with the node dash app and let's create uh, our Mongo container. So first of all, we have to name our service. We can call it anything we want. We can call it database. We can call it uh, Mongo. We can call it whatever we want. I'm just going to call it Mongo because it makes sense. It doesn't have to be though. I just want to make sure you guys understand that the service is just for your reference. And you'll see here that we have a, um, the build argument. Uh, and so in our node app, right, we're actually building our own custom image. We're taking the, uh, the base node image and then we're copying our code into it. However, for the Mongo service, right, we're just going to use this built in image. This has everything we need. We don't need to customize it. So anytime you're just using another image, we can use the image property. So we call image and then we call in the name Mongo. So that's going to grab this specific image. And I don't really care about the version. Any version's fine. So I'm just going to grab whatever the latest is. And then in the documentation, it's going to show us that we have to pass in uh, some environment variables. And so you can see here, it uh, looks like, uh, where is it? It's going to be somewhere down here. Here we go. So these are the two uh, variables, the environment variables that we have to pass in to make sure our Mongo container works properly. So we have to provide the root username and the root password. So I'm going to copy these. And feel free to set it to whatever you want. I'm just going to call this Sanjeev. And then let's grab the password as well. And I'm just going to say my password. So let's save this. And then let's do a Docker compose up. Uh, we don't need to do a dash dash build. All right, so now we can see that it is now creating our Mongo container. And if I do a Docker PS, we should now see two containers. We have our um, node Docker Mongo container as well as our node app as well. So now that we have our Mongo container up and running, what I want to do is I want to connect into the container and just poke around a bit. So let's do a Docker exec dash IT. And then the name of the uh, container. And then we'll do bash. So we can take a look at the file system. And so here, since we're connected to the container, we can actually connect into Mongo. Uh, so if I type in Mongo, and then we got to pass in a couple of flags, uh, that's going to be for your user and password. So if I do dash u, you pass in your username. And so that's going to come from that environment variable that you set. And then we have to pass in dash p for the password. And so now we're, uh, we're logged into our Mongo uh, instance. And I want to run just a couple of Mongo commands. If we type in DB, this is going to show us what database we're connected to. And so right now we're connected into a test database. I guess Mongo creates a test database so that we have some database to log into. And we can create a brand new database uh, with the use commands. So if I type in use and then the name of my new database, so I'm just going to call this my DB. You can see that it's switched to our newly created database. 
and we can run the command show dbs to list all the databases. And you can see that my DB is not listed on here. And that's just because Mongo won't list this database until we have an, a document or an entry within that database. And that would probably explain why we don't see test in that list as well. So let's create an entry. And um, let's just say we're making like a, uh, an application, like a library type application that's going to store a list of books. So we can do DB, then the name of the collection, which is called books. And then we'll just do an insert. So here we have to pass in uh, the properties of that entry. So we'll say um, name is going to be Harry Potter. All right, and so this means we successfully wrote to our database. And if I type in db.books.find, this is going to list out all of the uh, documents within our books collection. So here we've got one entry and we can see the name is set to Harry Potter. Perfect. And if we do a show DBs now, uh, we can see my DB is now listed on there. So let me log out of here. And let me log out of here. And I do want to show you guys one thing real quick. Um, so if you remember, uh, if your goal is to get into the Mongo uh, shell or the Mongo CLI, instead of having to do, do a Docker exec IT and then bash and then run, um, where is this command? Uh, Mongo dash U. Instead, what we can do is we can skip the bash and just run mongo dash u, then the username, and then the password. All right, so just a quicker way to get there. Um, but now what I want to do is I want to tear down our container. So let's do a Docker Compose down. And I'm going to use the dash v like we've been doing to make sure that we delete that anonymous volume. And then I want to bring it up. And I know you're thinking like, well, why do we tear it down just to bring it back up? It's obviously so I can teach you guys something. So let's do up dash D. And let's give it a few seconds to fully boot up. And then what I want to do is I'm going to log back into the Mongo shell. And let's do a show DBs, right? And right there, something looks odd, right? Our our database that we created called MyDB is now gone. And you might be wondering, well, what exactly happened? Well, think about it. We had a container, our Mongo container. We ran a Docker Compose down, which then deletes the container. Then we ran a Docker Compose up, which then creates a brand new container. So this is a brand new container. Everything that was in the previous container has been deleted. And this is a major problem because this is our database. You know, we don't want to lose that information. I mean, uh, if you're doing, you know, running like node tests and things like that, um, then yeah, maybe you'd want your database to kind of start from a fresh state each time. But, you know, in a production environment and even in a development environment, we want to keep all of our database information so that we don't have to keep recreating those entries. And especially in a production environment, uh, if you lost your database, you know, that's all of your uh, that's all of your application data that's just gone, right? At that point, you've pretty much broken your website or whatever application you're building. So you don't ever want to lose that information. And so how do we actually save that information? And I'm sure you guys already know this, right? We use volumes. You know, if you look at our Docker Compose file, uh, actually, let's go to the dev file. And for our Node app, you remember there's two different volumes here. So this helps us persist data. So let's do the same thing with our Mongo uh, container. So let me exit out of here. And let's do a Docker Compose down. And let's go to docker-compose.yaml. And let's add some volumes. And, uh, you know, if we go back to the dev, actually, to the .dev YAML, uh, you'll see that there's two different volumes that uh, we covered. We covered the bind mount, which syncs the data within the container to um, a folder on your local drive. And then we have an anonymous volume. So, you know, we could theoretically use either one. Uh, if you wanted to be able to uh, poke around uh, on, the, uh, on your database data on your local machine, then you'd use a bind mount. Um, but however, I don't really care about looking at that data. You know, I can just log into the Mongo client and actually just run commands to see what I need. I don't care about the file system. So it looks like an anonymous volume is a better choice. However, here's the problem. Uh, if you have an anonymous volume, and I think I have a few left. So if I do Docker volume LS, right? You know, these are what anonymous volumes are, right? 
just a bunch of random numbers, uh, just a random string or ID. I have no idea what these are for. Uh, and so when you have an anonymous volume, there's a good chance that you may accidentally delete it. And so I don't feel comfortable using an anonymous volume for this scenario because this is our application data, right? I want to make sure I know which volume is storing that data. So what we can do is we can create a named volume. Named volume is exactly the same as an anonymous volume, except we can give it a human readable name. So let me show you guys how to do that. And let's go under our Mongo service. And let's create a um, volume. And so here, uh, just like an anonymous volume, we have to pass in a path uh, within our container. And so to get that information, we have to look at the docs. And let's take a look. So here we go. It's probably under this where to store data. And so you can see they created a volume. And here they used a bind mount, so they stored it on their local directory, and they synced it with slash data slash DB. So this is the folder in the container that we're interested in. So we want to do slash data slash DB. And at this point, this is a anonymous volume. To, con uh, to convert this to a named volume, all we have to do is just do a colon and then just give it a name. So I'm going to call this Mongo dash DB. So it's going to save this volume with the name of Mongo dash DB. Right. And just to show you the difference, right? A bind mouth, you provide a path on your local machine to a path on the container. An anonymous volume, you just provide a path to the container uh, directory that you're interested in. And then for a named volume, you do a name, colon, and then the path within the container. But there's one more gotcha. Actually, let's save this and I'll show you what happens if we try to run this as is. So let's do a Docker Compose up. Right, and it says, named volume is used in a service Mongo, but no declaration was found in the volume section. Right, so it's saying that we have to declare something. And when it comes to named volumes, we do have to declare this volume uh, in another portion of our compose uh, in our Docker Compose file. And that's because a named volume can be used um, by multiple services. So, you know, if we had a, um, you know, like another Mongo instance or another Mongo service or any other service, they can attach to the same exact volume just like this Mongo service does. So all we have to do is at the bottom, uh, we just provide volumes. And so here we just provide a list of all of our named volumes. So here we just call this Mongo dash DB. That's all you have to do. Now let's do a Docker compose up. And let's contain, uh, let's connect into our Mongo client. Right. Remember, everything's gone. So let's create a new database and let's just insert that same exact entry. All right, perfect. So now let's exit out of here and let's tear down our, uh, all of our containers with a Docker Compose down and let's bring it back up and let's just verify that our information saved. So let's do a Docker Compose down. Now this is where we run into another issue and that's why I wanted to show you guys this. So remember we're using this dash V volume, uh, this dash V flag to automatically delete this anonymous volume. Um, because we, we don't need it. It's just there for that one little workaround for our node application. However, the problem is, is that this will delete not only anonymous volumes, but also named volumes. So if we pass in this dash V flag, it's going to also delete this database, our Mongo database, a volume. Uh, and so we obviously don't want to do that because we just went through all of this hassle so that we could save our database data. So we unfortunately cannot use the dash V flag anymore. So what you're going to have to do is remove the dash V flag and just do it down. And after that finishes running, if you do a Docker a volume LS, this is going to list out all of your volumes. You can see we have our node Docker MongoDB volume. So you can see it's given a nice name. So we know exactly what this is being used for. But we've got all of these um, anonymous volumes. So you'll see over time they start to build up. 
and you just have to delete them yourselves. And so there's a nice, easy command uh, called Docker volume, I believe prune, but don't run it yet. Instead, what I recommend that you do is start up your containers. So bring this back up. And then do a Docker volume and then do a dash dash help. And so we have this prune command, which removes all unused local volumes. So all of the volumes that are being used right now by the running containers will not get deleted when we run the prune, only the ones we don't need. So as long as you start up your application, uh, then your MongoDB and then whatever anonymous volume is associated with your application at the moment, will not get deleted and we can just clean up all the rest of the data that we don't care about. So if I do a Docker volume prune, we should be good to go. And so now if I do a Docker volume LS, you'll see we've got uh, significantly fewer volumes. Um, these are just the ones being used by either running or stopped containers. So just make sure you, uh, I, I believe you should start your containers, but I could be wrong. Maybe it also saves uh, stopped containers as well. So you might want to double check on that uh, within the documentation. But I do want to highlight, you know, just make sure that only that you only delete uh, stuff that you don't need. All right, so now let's uh, let's do a Docker PS. We have our Mongo container and let's connect into that container again. And let's just do show DBs and we can see that our data is still there. And if I do a db.books.find, Oh, I forgot to switch databases, so we have to use my DB. And then now we do this, and there we go. So we've now got persistent data for our Mongo database.